Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna walk through a tutorial on how to make a good tutorial. So I'm working on more programming content, but haven't quite finalized anything yet. So in the interim, I figured that this would be a fun video to do. I get a decent amount of DMs and YouTube comments kind of asking me how I make my videos. So I figured I'd walk through all of that information in this video, as well as this will be a beneficial video more generally for anyone that's trying to make instructional content on YouTube or any other platform. So maybe you already have your own channel and you're trying to make it better. Maybe you are thinking about starting a channel and you don't really know where to start. And maybe you have no idea why you're watching this video, but you know it's gonna be a great time, so you're gonna stick around anyway. I think that there will be some beneficial information for kind of any viewer. So as a first tip, in my opinion, any good tutorial should start with a quick outline. So what are you gonna be doing in this video? And ultimately, why should people watch it? So as an example, in this video, we are going to be learning how to create a picture-in-picture -picture video tutorial, and we will specifically be looking at a good workflow to plan, record and edit your video, what camera equipment and software tools you can use to help get this done, and just some general tips and tricks on creating instructional content. All right, jumping into the planning phase. So the first thing that I do with any tutorial that I work on is write out a rough outline of the most important topics that I wanna cover, as well as in this outline really figure out a way to structure a flow so that we can address all of those topics in a way that makes sense. Usually I just do this on like a Google Doc, but I just wanna have something that I can follow as I record the video to make sure that I'm you know, addressing what I wanna address. So next, if I'm working on a programming tutorial, I'll usually write out a reference version of the code that covers all the topics in the outline. And when I'm recording the video, I like to try to solve problems on the fly, but this reference version of the code can help keep me on track if I need it. Uh, ultimately, I would say that more organization you have, the better the tutorial. So having a reference version of the code you can look back on can help that. Same thing for any other sort of tutorial that you might make. All right, let's talk about how we actually record our videos. And so when we're talking about recording, I would split it into two different categories. I would say you have the video slash face recording, and then you have the screen recording. And I like to keep these separate because ultimately if we film these things separately, when we edit them, we have a little bit more flexibility with how we put them together. For video recording, my current setup is a Sony a6500 camera equipped with a Sigma 16 millimeter wide angle lens and a Rode Video Micro microphone. And I also have an Andy Cine external monitor so that I can frame myself properly. This setup works great for me, but it definitely is pretty expensive. And it definitely isn't necessary to buy a setup in this price range. One of my good friends, Kylie, who has all sorts of awesome tutorials that you should definitely check out, is able to record all of her videos with a much simpler setup. She just uses her old iPhone 6 equipped with a microphone that she bought off of Amazon for like 20 US dollars. And that's what she's able to use for her video recording. So you definitely don't need what I described that I have. The one additional aspect I would say is important with recording your video is having good lighting. So you can have external lights to do this. I personally have two very bright monitors right next to me so that I try to just turn them to a white background so that they can properly light up my face when I'm doing the video recordings. For screen recording, I use a program called Snagit, built by a company called TechSmith, which is available for both Windows and Mac OS. Overall, it's worked very well for me. I would say that the only downfall is that I did have to pay a one-time 50 US dollars license fee to use it. So if you're looking for a free alternative, there are some options. If you're using a Mac OS, I know that Kylie uses QuickTime as a free screen recording software, but there are also some for Windows as well, which I'll link to in the description. I will film chunks of about like 10 minutes of me programming, screen recording with Snagit while also filming my face. And ultimately I do a bunch of those kind of 10 minute segments for however long the video is. And then I'll stitch all those together. As far as some general tips for the recording phase, I would say that the most important thing is to have good audio. You need to have a good microphone. It doesn't matter if you have the fanciest camera in the world and you're going through the best content in the world. If people can't hear you explain it and can't hear that clearly, they're not gonna watch your tutorial. So if you're gonna invest in anything here, I would definitely invest in a good microphone. So Rode has some good microphones. I also, as far as, even if you're not 
going to attach it directly to a camera. If you just want a microphone to plug into your computer, I recommend the Blue Snowball, which I'll link into the description. That's kind of what I used before I started doing the audio through my camera. But I, I really want to reiterate, if you're gonna invest in anything, invest in a good microphone. And then the second most important thing I would say is just make sure that your content and whatever you're talking about is very clear on your screen. So make your font big, make it very visible so that people can hear you clearly and they can also see what you're doing clearly. So once you're done recording everything, it is time to move into the editing phase. And so for editing, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. I use the full suite of Adobe Creative Cloud products for a lot of the things I do. So I use Premiere Pro for editing videos. I use Photoshop for doing all my thumbnails and banner customizations, as well as kind of making some images potentially for the videos. And then I use Lightroom to style any photos I might post to my Instagram or something. And for all of that, the whole Adobe Creative Cloud, I pay a little over, I think, $50 a month, which is a steep price tag for people getting into it. So there are also free alternatives for all of those items. So if you're on Mac OS, I know that iMovie comes by default. If you're on Windows, you can. there's a bunch of different pretty good video editing products that you can use for free. I'm not super familiar with them myself, but I know that I've heard HitFilm Express is a good product for free editing on Windows, for especially for beginners. And then if you are a little bit more advanced, you could use a product called DaVinci Resolve for editing on Windows for free. And then maybe at some point, if you wanna move into Adobe Premiere Pro, you can always do that, but it does come with a bit more of a price tag. And then one addition to that is that pretty much all of these products, these editing, photo editing and video editing products, oftentimes have student discounts. It might be like a 60% discount from that $50 a month price tag for the whole suite of Creative Cloud products. So that's worth checking into as well. So the first thing I do when I'm actually editing is I take the screen recordings and I take the video recordings and I sync their audios together. When they're played through, it seems natural to see the, the video and also in the background, see what's actually going on on the screen. So I, I just make sure that the audio is in sync and then I start playing around a little bit more with the details. For me personally, I like to have a rounded rectangle as kind of my little video feed. So to do that in Premiere Pro, I use a matte. So I basically import a Photoshop file that's just a rounded rectangle. I put that into my video, one of my video channels. And then with my video recording, I use the effect track matte key. And that fits me into that rounded rectangle. So basically I can continue from there. And then with Adobe Premiere Pro, I can play around with the sizing and the position of that rounded rectangle to get exactly the look I want. I keep doing that for all of the different clips in the tutorial. And then once I have kind of a base of the full tutorial, there's a couple other things that I like to do. First, I like to any silence periods where I pause for a long time or maybe like stumble and like say, um, like six times in a row. I try to cut those out to shorten it. That's one thing to do. Another kind of touch up thing that I do is I try to get the audio to be as close to the highest level without exceeding that level as possible, just so I make sure that people can hear it properly when I ultimately upload it to YouTube. And then the final thing I do, once I kind of have a base, I like to get like a base of everything in the video, I start trimming it. And then the final thing that I usually do is add in more effects. So if I want something to pop up onto the screen with a sound, I kind of do that at the end and I give those final touch-ups. I you might like, you know, throw in my Instagram tag or my Twitter tag, uh, which now that I'm, I'm gonna do that right now, <laughs> Uh, you should definitely uh, maybe check out those if you uh, are so inclined. Uh, but I'll, yeah, I'll pop in those effects too at the end and kind of make those final touch-ups before I'm ready to export and then ultimately upload. So I export using the recommended YouTube settings and for whatever video platform you're using, whether it be Premiere Pro, iMovie, Final Cut, Hit Film Express, DaVinci Resolve, etc. You can probably find a like recommended settings to upload to YouTube or upload to Facebook, wherever you're trying to upload. So I recommend doing that too and trying to upload with as high re resolution as possible. That's probably a given, but if you recorded it in full HD, definitely make sure you export it in full HD. All right, at this point you have planned out your video, you have recorded your video and you have 
edited your video, but are you done? And the answer is, no, you are not. And I don't know what I just did there, but <laughs> I would say that after you're done editing and exporting your video, one of the most critical steps comes next, and that is prepping to post your video, wherever that may be. So uh, in my case, YouTube, and many people's cases, probably YouTube. Before you post, make sure you spend some time to do kind of the final things. The first thing that you really wanna spend time doing is make a good thumbnail. This is what people are going to see when they uh, are potentially going to view your video. So what I think about when I think of a thumbnail is if you make a, a very visually appealing, professional looking, uh, well-built thumbnail, it kind of signals to a potential viewer that, okay, this, this thumbnail looks great. Uh, maybe the, the video, the content for this is also great. So I think the thumbnail can help signal like the quality of the video. And ultimately you really want that because you've spent all the time to make the video. You might as well spend a little bit of extra time to make that good thumbnail so people actually view it. I use Adobe uh, Photoshop to make my thumbnails. And as I mentioned, you know, that's part of the Creative Cloud and it's a paid product. But there are also good free alternatives. One simple thing that I used to do was just use like Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint and I would make thumbnails in that. That's okay. Another option that uh, Kylie recommended was a site called Photopea. And this is just like a cloud, you know, you can just go to this on your browser and you can make all sorts of um, image edits and whatnot there. It's like kind of seems very similar to a Photoshop, but it's free and it's browser based. So you can just go to the link right here and ultimately edit, you know, a thumbnail. Uh, in addition to the thumbnail, it's important to really think about your title of your video and your description. Title wise, if you just post your video as like tutorial 12, no other context given, no, you know, descriptive keywords, no one's going to find your tutorial. So what I like to think about when I post a tutorial is I try to think in the kind of the, the shoes of a potential viewer. So if I was someone struggling with a certain programming challenge, what would I type in to, you know, my YouTube search bar to try to find the help that I needed? And so I kind of take that type of thinking and I take the keywords that might be in a query like that. And that's ultimately how I kind of construct a title. And then the description, I usually just try to actually spend some time and just really write out what we do in the tutorial. And I think it's just good to have a good description. So once you have the thumbnail, the title, the description, you know, then you're basically ready to post. Maybe if you want to monetize or something, you know, there might be a couple other steps, but you're probably good at that point. And so finally, when you've done all that, this is the best part. You get to, you know, release your tutorial into the world. So go ahead, upload it and, you know, click the post button and then, you know, just kick back. Uh, and, and relax, you've done it. Nice work. All right, with that, we are going to conclude the video here. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this one. We'll be back with some more programming content soon. I've just been pretty busy uh, with, I work full-time at a startup, and it's just been a grind recently. Uh, a good grind, I would say, overall, but I, it is a bit of a bummer because I love making YouTube videos, and it's just been tough for me to find the time to consistently do it. Uh, moving forward, I really, really am going to try to make two videos a month but I might have to switch up the content a bit. I might do more videos like this, where it's just kind of a, maybe a little bit of a separate tutorial, something else, not directly programming related. Maybe I'll do some vlogs on my kind of startup life, maybe some kind of just advice type videos where I kind of just walk through something I've learned so far in my career that might be helpful for all of you, but I'll also be doing the, you know, the regular programming content you probably expect. Getting back to the topic of this video, uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully you learned something. If you do have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. Also in the comments, if you have any like kind of tips and tricks of your own for making instructional videos, definitely leave them there because I'm sure myself and everyone else watching the video would really enjoy seeing those and would definitely benefit from them. Last thing before I go, most important thing, make sure to absolutely smash that uh, subscribe button, like button, all the buttons, maybe check out my Instagram, Twitter, you know, all that good stuff. But until next time, everyone, it's been fun. Peace out.